A Nightmare by W. S. Gilbert Read for LibriVox.org by Patrick Beverley When you're lying awake with a dismal headache and repose is tabooed by anxiety, I conceive you may use any language you choose to indulge in without impropriety, for your brain is on fire, the bedclothes conspire of usual slumber to plunder you, first your counterpane goes and uncovers your toes, and your sheet slips demurely from under you, then the blanketing tickles, you feel like mixed pickles, so terribly sharp is the pricking, and you're hot and you're cross, and you tumble and toss, till there's nothing twixt you and the ticking. Then the bedclothes all creep to the ground in a heap, and you pick em all up in a tangle. Next your pillow resigns and politely declines to remain at its usual angle. Well, you get some repose in the form of a doze, with hot eyeballs and head ever aching. But your slumbering teems with such horrible dreams that you'd very much better be waking. For you dream you are crossing the channel and tossing about in a steamer from Harwich which is something between a large bathing machine and a very small second-class carriage, and you're giving a treat, penny ice and cold meat, to a party of friends and relations. They're a ravenous horde, and they all came on board at Sloane Square and South Kensington stations. And bound on that journey you find your attorney, who started that morning from Devon. He's a bit undersized, and you don't feel surprised when he tells you he's only eleven. Well, you're driving like mad with this singular lad. By the by, the ship's now a four-wheeler. And you're playing round games, and he calls you bad names when you tell him that ties pay the dealer. But this you can't stand, so you throw up your hand and you find you're as cold as an icicle. In your shirt and your socks, the black silk with gold clocks, crossing Salisbury Plain on a bicycle. And he and the crew are on bicycles too, which they've somehow or other invested in, and he's telling the tars all the particulars of a company he's interested in. It's a scheme of devices to get at low prices all goods from cough mixtures to cables, which tickled the sailors by treating retailers as though they were all vegetables. You get a good spadesman to plant a small tradesman, first take off his boots with a boot tree, and his legs will take root, and his fingers will shoot, and they'll blossom and bud like a fruit tree. From the greengrocer tree you get grapes and green pea, cauliflower, pineapple, and cranberries, while the pastry-cook plant cherry brandy will grant, apple puffs and three-corners and banberries. The shares are a penny, and ever so many are taken by Rothschild and Baring, and just as a few are allotted to you, you awake with a shudder despairing. You're a regular wreck with a crick in your neck, and no wonder you snore, for your head's on the floor, and you've needles and pins from your soles to your shins, and your flesh is a creep, for your left leg's asleep, and you've cramp in your toes, and a fly on your nose, and some fluff in your lung, and a feverish tongue, and a thirst that's intense, and a general sense that you haven't been sleeping in clover. <gasps> but the darkness has passed, and it's daylight at last, and the night has been long, ditto ditto my song, and thank goodness they're both of them over. End of recording. This recording is in the public domain.